Hey, this is Mike Ambassador Bruni here, and I'm here to talk to you about what do you do after the magic is gone? How do you keep it? How do you keep the magic going after you come back from a conference? I got 10 ways that I'm going to share with you today that will keep you from singing a song like this. Memories in the corner of my mind. Misty colored memories of the way we were. No, none of that. We're going to focus on the present and how we can move things forward. So number one thing that you can do is just reach out to people. Send them an email. Uh, I usually tell people the time to follow up, 24 hours after you meet, in 24 days, make it a month. But follow up. So that's rule number one. Number two, stay engaged in something like a Facebook group. It's a great way to connect. And simple things such as asking, hey, what are you working on? Or what are your biggest challenges? Will definitely keep things moving. Number three. Now, we've, all war we've been warned about forming clicks. But I'm going to tell you, form a group within the group. It's usually a much smaller, tighter knit group that actually keeps things going. If you focus and try and worry about a big number of people, you're probably going to die out. So focus on your little crew and work from there. Number four, set up monthly calls. Use freeconferencecall.com or if you want to be online, use something like Google Hangout or there's also this app I found on Facebook. I think it's called Vocal that you can use. Go from there. Number five, commit to in-person meetings. You can meet quarterly. You can meet semi-annual. You can make the conference one of the places that you promise to meet each year. House each other, feed each other, whatever it takes, but get that face-to-face -face contact. Number six, give back collectively. Find something that you can all dedicate some energy to, such as Habitat for Humanity, when you folks get together, or whether it be separate, but find that collective piece. Number seven, stays on that collective piece, and that is find a goal. Help each other achieve goals. You know, be clear about what each and every person in your small group is working on and find a way that you can actually help them. Not just, not just a mind, uh, which is important, cheerleading, but find a way that you can actually lend a hand. Think about having those little check boxes and actually owning one for someone else and allow them to own something else for you. So we're talking about, not only talking, but I'm challenging you to actually help someone else in your group that you met at a conference to make more money, to, to free up more time. Make it actionable. Number eight, start a, start a group blog. It doesn't have to be a blog. It can be a newsletter. It can be something that doesn't go out to the public, or maybe it does. I belong to a leadership group where each week we have a different member of the group take the helm, and they write a different message to the whole group for all seven days. Then when you pass the baton, no Olympic pun intended there, to the next person. So you can do the same thing. Number nine, start a book club. If each and every one of you commit to reading just 10 pages a day, you can get through 300 pages of any book, right? And most books aren't even 300 pages long. But imagine capturing your notes that each person has and then creating a um, one collaborative piece that could potentially even be a source of income for the group as now you're creating your own cliff notes. And number 10, I'm leaving that one up to you. I don't have a number 10, but I invite you to Give me your number 10 down below in the comment section. This is Mike Ambassador Bruni. As always, my goal is to help you run the point, and that's take action from where you are with what you have. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please feel free to join me on the new art of conference networking dot com where you can get different updates by just leaving your name and your email. Take care. Peace.